y'all. Some days are just better than others. I got a call from a buddy. And he's like, hey man, have you been home? Have you been home? I'm like, no man, what's going on? He goes, oh, I just wonder what you're doing this weekend. And just being really coy. Arizona Coos Hunter. And uh, I get home and I see this box sitting in the living room. And he's giggling because he sent me what could be um, the greatest gift to date. Check it out. Check out what's in this box. Oh, only your friends. That's a, that's a wolf. Fox. Wolverine. Lynx. Martins. No way. Uh, so these were acquired from a trapper, an actual licensed trapper. And instead of all this stuff going, you know, in the scrap barrel, it wound up right here. Elidia. That's the Wolverine. Holy cow. We've got our work cut out for us, y'all. Y'all, today, I don't have time to get all these done. I, I gotta get to work, but let's take care of the wolf first because there's been so many requests for the wolf. I'm gonna take a very quick minute here and rant. It's official that skull cleaning or removing hide or meat from an animal is deemed shocking. For some reason, every sci-fi TV show, every law and order program, they can do this to a human being and pump it right in the front room so all your kids can see. But on a platform like YouTube where you got to go and click on it, it's not approved. This will be demonetized. This will be disallowed for certain ages. So instead of trying to sugarcoat it, I'm just going to give you the very raw, very real version of skull cleaning. So here it is, the wolf. When cleaning skulls, it is important to remove as much meat and tissue as you can before you start your boil. Because this meat was so big on the back of this wolf's head, and I know the backstory on this wolf, I'm actually going to consume it. I'm going to try it and see how it tastes. I get lots of questions about that, and I've said before I've never done it, and I never have, but I'm going to give this one a go. So go through, remove everything you can, eyes, tongue, cheeks, you name it, Get it off there because it's going to help fast track the time in the boil. What you're looking at there, that white powder, that's an OxyClean seasoning. Very, very good on wolf meat. I'm just kidding. I actually just sprinkle it on there so I have a little bit to grip when I'm removing that meat. I get quite a few comments about people who are extremely creeped out when I remove the eyes. To me, it's just another piece of that animal. I don't look at it as disrespect or anything other than that's an eyeball on an animal that has died. It's got to come off for me to do my job. So the reason I'm not fast forwarding through this is because I want you to see how it all works in real time. And I want to emphasize the fact that in order to have something beautiful, somebody has to deal with the ugly. For me, it has never creeped me out. It has never made me feel funny. I just have a really good understanding, like most of you watching. I have a really good understanding of life and death, how animals play into that, how we are here to utilize and protect them. We're just taking off the surplus, so there's plenty of room for all of us. It's just a real, real crystal clear picture for me. All right, 
top side done. Let's flip him over, put a little more seasoning on there. We'll get this cheek removed. And then I'm going to remove the tongue and the jaw. I just want to say too, if you're doing this for the first time, there is no wrong method of doing this. I'm just giving you a real general rule of thumb, but as long as you're removing the meat in any fashion before you boil, you're doing yourself a favor. We'll just apply a little more powdered grip. And then I like to run my knife in that jawbone on the inside. So like cutting along the tongue up the jawbone, front and back and where it hinges, put your knife in both sides and just give it a cut. There was quite a bit of neck left on this wolf too. So in order to cut that apex joint or that joint on the back of the head, I like to come as close as I can to the back of the jawline and cut down and you'll see that little, um, you'll actually see that joint. I cut it to where I can't cut anymore. Then I flip it over where I see that bone on bone joint. And then I just cut, cut, cut. And a lot of times I'll stick a screwdriver in there and just again, give it a bunch of forceful pressure and pop that free. To remove the jaw, you want to expand it as far as you can and then cut that webbing. Remember, you've already cut right and left of the bone and then just hyper extend it past center and it should come right off. That thing has got one seriously tough jaw on it. Very, very very stout critter. Not going to be easy like a coyote or a bobcat. This one's going to take a little work. All right, next step, because I am going to work. I'm going to drop this into the crock pot. I'm going to add a little wolf seasoning, some carrots, potatoes, celery, just a nice maripaw. I'm kidding. A little OxyClean, fill it full of water, put that bad boy on high, and deal with it later. Cold in SoCal. We got weather coming. <laughs> weather for us is not like real weather for the rest of the world. 40s. Oh, we're all gonna die. All right, here we go. Wolf been in the crock pot quite a bit of the day. Not even close to being ready to go. It smells delicious. Let's give it a squirt. Let's give it a squirt and see what happens. Let me get this out now so I can drop a few beets during the wash. When you're cleaning skulls, you need to spray into every hole and every orifice. Any meat, any tissue, anywhere has got to go away. Get you a power washer and get to washing. Yesterday was quite the calamity. I had my burner set up and break. It was just all over the map. I want this, the wolf video to just be great because it's a wolf. It's really cool. Um, and I just couldn't get anything together. The light was bad. So I've got a little gap in the clouds right now. It's been raining all morning. And this wolf has been in there overnight. It should be a 10 minute wash off. Let's get to going.
All right, what you're looking at here is I've made a mixture of 40% by volume liquid developer peroxide, 40% by volume, and water. I've mixed them 50-50. I poured it into a pot, and I brought that pot to a boil with the wolf in it. Okay, y'all, listen close. Did you hear the air come out of the brain cavity of that wolf? That's key. The second that it hits a boil, I turn it off, remove it, and power wash it clean. That product is degreasing and whitening all in one mix, and that is the key to brilliant white skulls. Now this part might be a little controversial, but on deer, anything with horns or antlers, I remove the auditory bull or the ear butt. But for some reason on this wolf, I felt that it was important because there was really, really, really tough brain matter and tendons up in behind there. So I stick a screwdriver in his ear hole and I pop out those ear butts and I hit them with a wafer bit, just a little 5 8 bit and I open it up so it's nice and clean. Remember, this sits on a shelf, not in a museum. I want it clean. And then I power wash inside there and you cannot believe how much excess stuff was in the brain cavity of that wolf. straight days I'm gonna drop it into a mason jar I'm not gonna do anything to it I'm just gonna stuff it in there no flavor no seasoning I want to taste it I want to see what it tastes like make sure you're make sure you're cleaning your lid and the top of your jar it's all been sanitized terrible job of showing you that your lid. It's clean, it's hot, it's boiled. I'm gonna power wash that. <laughs> I am gonna focus. I am gonna take and pressure cook this 15 pounds of pressure for an hour. Last process, we're gonna give it a little coat of mop and glow. You guys know the drill, but this is gonna keep the, uh, the dust from settling into that skull and making it look Gusty for years to come. It's gonna kind of seal that bone up. Just make it look nice. I just brush it into every little area. Let it dry. One coat will not die, dry with a shine. Two coats will make it shine. Make sure you know what you're looking for. I personally don't like a bunch of shine. but I love the sealed look, if that makes sense. So make more of a more of a satin finish. All right, we're gonna leave this in front of the fan to dry. The wolf is in the pressure cooker. Do you ever get home from work, man, and you're just jonesing for some wolf meat? I wanna make something with it, but in the meantime, I want to try it raw, right? Nothing on it. No salt, no nothing. It smells like a really, really good cat food. I'm, 
I'm not sure how far we got. The I ran out of SD card. So the reason I pressure cooked this wolf is because it can literally make anything tender. So this thing got an hour, one hour at 18 PSI, 18 pounds of pressure. It'll literally dissolve bones. Um, when I cut these pieces of meat off the back of that wolf's head, it looked like Wagyu. I mean, it was marbled and unbelievable. And what I have come to find out, that's not marbling, that is just apex predator connective tissue. I kid you not. I was thinking I was going to be able to pull it and tear it. Wow. So there's nothing on this. The flavor is not bad, but the texture is awful. It's like the worst texture of anything of anything I've ever eaten. Coco, I got some food for you. So I did this whole thing of me eating the wolf in there and I just, the footage is rotten and I, <laughs> I'm about as rotten as this meat is. Um, so I came out here so you could get good light so I could show you what this piece of meat looks like. It's unbelievable. Um, it doesn't have a bad flavor at all. Nothing to do with flavor, but the texture is just like nothing I've ever tasted. It's like a combination of silicone and wood chips <laughs> it's it is building material grade tough all right y'all there's a look at the finished skull i want to say a very special thank you to my buddy arizona coos hunter and to tyler Friel for providing me these skulls to share and to show you guys if you get a minute and you like podcasts you're gonna want to listen to tundra talk Tyler hosts it. I just listened to a few episodes. It's very well done. Thank you again, gentlemen. All right, I can't sign off just yet. I know you guys have met Coco, the famous wiener. But I'm gonna see how she, I mean, it's one thing for me to judge it, but it's another thing for a dog to judge it. She's a runner, so I can't just let her go anywhere. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Wiener dog eats a wolf. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna title this thing. What do you think? Okay, <laughs> she's had enough of it. If <laughs> If she's not gonna eat it, it's not good. Coco, come see you later. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Come on, you. <laughs>